la 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 hosanna in the highest i'm going to do for you the christmas fairy monologue with the kind permission of the author stephen deal oh oh now where's me tiara oh <laughs> oh hello don't mind me i'm nearly done <laughs> Does that look straight to you? Oof. Oh, look at this. A Christmas card from Cinderella. Oh, dear Brenda, Merry Christmas. Lots of love from Cinders and Charming. Kiss, kiss, kiss. Ah. Oh, P.S. Please, would you send me your recipe for pumpkin pie? Ooh, what a palaver, eh? Every year it's the same. The sound of the last firework dies away and Asda's discounting mince pies on the telly. Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. It's the festive season. <laughs> Mind you, you won't hear me complaining. It may only be seasonal work, but being the fairy on top of the Christmas tree, it's a whole lot better than collecting teeth from under children's pillows. People go around, you know, sticking fluoride in toothpaste, but they don't think of the consequences. There are those of us for whom bad teeth are a source of income. Oh, but being the fairy on the top of the Christmas tree, oh, it's dead brill. <laughs> For a start, you get a good view of what's going on. And boy, don't it go on. <laughs> First of all, there's that business with Father Christmas. Now, what's all that about? A fat bloke in a red suit squeezes his way down the chimney and leaves a load of stuff. The first time I saw him, I thought he was a fly tipper. <laughs> I had a peak one year. Do you know? He arrives on a flying sleigh. It's only got one light and that's red. <laughs> it's stuck on the nose of a reindeer. Well, that can't be legal. <laughs> oh, and then poor elves that he has. Oh, he never lets them have a swig of the sherry that folk leave out for him. Mind you, that's probably a good thing. Oh, they're vicious when they're drunk. <laughs> Oh, you wouldn't believe the turkey that this family's bought. It's the size of a small caravan. Oh, they always buy too much. No one needs a hundred weight of Brussels sprouts, not even in Belgium. But that's the thing about Christmas. Everyone does things to excess. Have you seen outside? Oh. They've put up some outdoor decorations. Oh, there's so many lights out there. A jumbo jet's just landed on the garage roof. <laughs> well, what about this tree I'm supposed to sit on, eh? It's huge. There's still a family of squirrels hibernating in the trunk. Oh, it's got that many baubles hanging off it. It's like a pawnbroker's convention. Oh, it's got them fairy lights that flash and play music. Oh, it's going to be like sitting on top of a high-pitched discotheque. <laughs> Still, I shouldn't complain. It's that lot over there in the corner that I feel sorry for. Apparently, it's called a crib scene. Now, I have to be honest, and for quite some while, I didn't realise that it had anything to do with Christmas but I've been talking to one of the camels and he's explained it all to me. It seems there's a baby over there and it's in a manger. Apparently, it's his birthday. Oh, the poor thing. Just fancy being born at Christmas when there's so much going on. Anyway, according to this camel, mum and dad couldn't find anywhere to stop and have the baby. They obviously haven't booked in advance, which is what you should do when it's the holiday season. So they ended up in a stable. Oof, very picturesque, I'm sure. But it's not very hygienic. Anyway, this baby's born and all these people start arriving. 
First, there's a whole load of shepherds, complete with sheep. Then there's a donkey. And then three kings turn up on camels bearing gifts. Well, the kings were not the camels. Gold and frankincense and fur. Well, it should have been myrrh, but that flew off oh, a few years back. And when they tried to glue it back on, the cat got in the way. Anyway, on top of all this, there's several angels and a whopping great big star made out of bottle tops. I feel sorry for that child, I really do. He's dragged out every Christmas and made a fuss of. Then before you know it, he's back in the box and shoved up out of the way in the attic. You never get a chance to really get to know him. I think that's a pity because I get the feeling there's a lot more to him than a guest slot in the Christmas nativity play and one chorus of Away in a Manger. <laughs> right, well, it's time to climb to the top of the tree. Oh, I do hope that they've got one of them non-drop ones this year. Those pine needles, oh, they get everywhere. Toodaloo. <laughs>